Good morning. This is Bill Tankersley and this is Faith Walk. One of the most spectacular characteristics of the Hollywood film industry is special effects. How many times have you walked out of a theater thinking, wow, how did they do that? For example, those of you who are James Bond fans might know about the biggest stunt explosion in movie history and it was in the 24th Bond movie Spectre. It was even listed in the Guinness Book of World Records. It was an impressive scene. It took over 2,000 gallons of kerosene, 300 detonators, 24 explosive devices, and a mountain of dust and debris to fake this spectacular explosion. Too bad the Guinness Book of World Records wasn't around in Jesus' day because there is no Hollywood special effect that can match the earth-shaking, tomb-opening visit from the angel on resurrection morning. In fact, the shock waves of joy from that morning are still being felt all over the world. It was the most joyful event in the history of humanity. The crowds you remember shouted as Jesus welcome, was welcomed into Jerusalem, Hosanna. But their hosannas turned quickly to hostility and hatred. By the end of the week, Jesus heard the shouts of crucify him ringing in the ears as he carried his cross up the hill to Golgotha. When we read the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, after the Sabbath, at the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb rolled back the stone and sat on it. Remember that? The angel sat on the stone. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who is crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, yet afraid, filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. The angel rolled away the stone so that the visitors of, that were looking for Jesus that morning or Jesus' body could see inside the empty tomb. And then the angel sat down on the stone. Why did he sit down on the stone? He wasn't tired. The angel was sitting there waiting for the women to arrive. What do you reckon he was doing while he waited? Well, we don't know. But one thing we know is that he wasn't practicing what he was going to say to the women. We might do that, but not an angel. It said when Tom Cruise was filming the, the film Days of Thunder, the scriptwriter changed the script on an almost daily basis. So Cruise taped pages of the script to the dashboard of his race car. Unfortunately, he was so busy reading while driving that on one occasion he crashed the car. Angels may have a fairly hard job, but memorizing their lines should be easy. Almost every angel, at least in the New Testament, has the same opening line, Do not be afraid, or fear not. Do not be afraid. These four words and an exclamation point. That is how you know God is near. Whenever God is near, people get very afraid. Imagine the women coming to the tomb in the early morning darkness. Their eyes are swollen and tender from weeping. Their hearts are breaking. It's a journey they hoped they would never have to make. They walk to the tomb with heavy hearts, fearful of being harassed by the guards, worried about how they would move the stone, and grieving because a man who was away the truth and life was now dead and in the grave. And then they saw the angel waiting for them. Notice what the angel says. He is not here. He is risen. Just as he said, come see for yourself. Then go quickly, tell the disciples he is already headed for Galilee. And as the women hurried out of the tomb, Jesus appeared to them in the flesh. 
Jesus, whose bloody, tortured body they had prepared for burial, was now standing before them alive. Do not be afraid, he said. Go and tell my brethren to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. And nothing in human history has been the same since that moment. Shock waves of joy are still reaching through time, across nations, into human hearts. Dr. Billy Graham once told a reporter for Time magazine, If I were an enemy of Christianity, I would aim right at the resurrection, because that is the heart of Christianity. Jesus' resurrection from the grave and His promise of eternal life for all those who put their trust in Him is at the very heart of Christianity. We can say hallelujah, first of all, to the victory of love over hate. The world turned against Jesus in that last week of His life. Why didn't He give up on humanity right there and then? It was those last lonely hours of His, rest, his arrest and torture and crucifixion. Why didn't He put a stop to it all? Why would He remain faithful when we were faithless? Why would He remain courageous when we were cowards? Why would He still love us when we betrayed Him? Because God's love is essential nature. This is essential of God's love. Love is God's greatest weapon to defeat evil. Love is why God created the world in the first place and how God will save the world at the last. God's faithful love will never give up on us. On the cross, Jesus forgave those who put Him there. He gave His life for the very people who hated and rejected and abandoned Him. Hate eventually hits a dead end when it poisons both the victim and the perpetrator. But love has an endless capacity to heal and transform and bring new hope and life to both its giver and its recipient. Martin Luther King Jr. in his essay, Love Your Enemies, wrote, To our most bitter opponents, we say, We shall match your capacity to inflict suffering by our capacity to endure suffering. We shall meet your physical force with soul force. Do to us what you will, and we shall continue to love you. One day we shall win freedom, but not only for ourselves. We shall appeal to your heart and conscience that we shall win you in the process, and our victory will be a double victory. Christ's victory on the cross was a double victory. It was a victory of love over hate. It was also a victory of life over death. Even in the Middle East, the shockwaves of his victory over both death and hate are still being felt today. In Jesus' suffering on the cross and his willingness to forgive those who put him there, we can say hallelujah to the victory of life over death and love over hate. And finally, we can say hallelujah to the victory of hope over despair. Only when you're sitting beside a tomb do you really understand the value of life. Only when you have stared hatred in the faith face do you really understand the value of love. Only when you have experienced the darkest depths of despair do you understand the power of unshakable hope, the hope that can only be found in the character and promises of a faithful, loving, and powerful God. Once we understand the power of His resurrection, we live the rest of our lives just outside the fullness of God's grace and life everlasting. The fullness of God's grace is found in an empty tomb. The fullness of God's grace is found in the victory of love over hate, of life over death, and hope over despair. Today and every day we can say hallelujah and amen to the victory found only in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear God in heaven, we thank you for the victory we can gain as a Christian, that Jesus lived and died and was resurrected so that we can have an eternal home with you. Be with us this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.